In this video, we'll be talking about the principle of reversibility. When embarking on any fitness journey, understanding various foundational principles is crucial to optimizing gains and avoiding pitfalls. Among these, the principle of reversibility stands out. But what exactly is this principle? Well, at its core, the principle of reversibility conveys a simple truth. If you don't use it, you lose it. It means that the gains, be it muscular strength or cardiovascular endurance, start to diminish when you stop training or reduce the intensity significantly. Imagine this, you've been working out consistently and over the months, you've built up a good muscle tone and cardiovascular fitness. You then take a break, maybe due to a vacation, work commitments, or just a lack of motivation. Upon returning, you find that lifting those weights or running that distance has become tougher than before. This regression is the principle of reversibility in action. To visualize this better, think of your fitness like a bucket of water with a tiny hole at the bottom. The water represents your current level of fitness and the hole is the principle of reversibility. When you stop working out, it's like you've stopped adding water to the bucket. But because of that hole, your fitness level starts to drop. At the heart of it all is our body's inherent drive for efficiency. Think of the body as an incredibly intelligent machine that's always looking for ways to operate at its best with the least amount of unnecessary effort. The body's primary objective is to conserve energy and use it where it's most needed. Let's draw a simple analogy. Imagine you have a house with several rooms, but you only use three or four of them regularly. To save on electricity, you'd naturally switch off the lights in the rooms you don't use. Over time, if a particular room remains unused, you might even decide to store less furniture there and not maintain it as much. Similarly, our body switches off or downsizes parts that are not being frequently used. When you engage in regular exercise, you're essentially telling your body, hey, I need these muscles to be strong, or I need the stamina to do these activities. In response, the body builds muscle mass and improves cardiovascular efficiency to meet these demands. It's like upgrading the rooms of your house based on how much you use them. However, if you stop exercising or reduce the intensity significantly, you're sending a different message to your body. You're implying that you don't need as much strength or endurance as before. Just as you turn off the lights in unused rooms to save electricity, the body, in its bid to conserve energy, starts to reduce the muscle mass and cardiovascular capabilities that are no longer in high demand. Why maintain something that's not being used? especially if it demands extra energy. And this isn't the body being lazy or negligent. On the contrary, it's the body being remarkably astute and adaptable. It's making calculated decisions based on the inputs it receives. If the body can save energy by reducing muscle tissue or cardiovascular strengths, it will, so it has reserves for other vital functions. It's a survival mechanism rooted in our evolutionary past when conserving energy could mean the difference between life and death. However, it's crucial to know that principle of reversibility isn't an isolated concept. It interacts with other foundational fitness principles. For instance, the overload principle dictates that to improve our fitness, we must expose our bodies to loads greater than what they are accustomed to. But if we take extended breaks, the principle of reversibility takes over, making the return to previous fitness levels challenging. Lastly. As with many things in the world of fitness and health, there are plenty of myths going around. A common misunderstanding about reversibility principle is that muscles turn into fat when not exercised. Now that's not accurate. Muscles can atrophy or shrink in size, and if you're consuming more calories than you're burning, you may gain fat. But muscles and fat are distinct tissues. One does not transform into the other. Understanding the principle of reversibility is about realizing that consistency in training matters. It's a gentle reminder that while breaks are okay and sometimes needed, extended periods of inactivity will have consequences. This knowledge empowers us to make informed decisions about our training schedules and to recognize the importance of maintaining some form of activity even during life's busier and challenging times. One cannot stress enough the importance of planning and foresight in strength and conditioning especially given the principle of reversibility. When mapping out training routines, it's imperative to consider the potential breaks one might need, either for vacations, rest, or unforeseen circumstances. During these breaks, 
even if intense training isn't feasible, integrating lighter workouts can be beneficial. For instance, if an athlete is accustomed to heavyweight training, incorporating bodyweight exercises during breaks can maintain muscle engagement. Similarly, for someone focused on cardiovascular conditioning, swapping out long runs for brisk walks or light jogs during off days can make a world of difference. Such strategies ensure that the gap between stopping and restarting training doesn't create a significant decline in fitness levels. Detraining can be visualized as a backward slide in your fitness journey. It's what happens when there's a drop in physical activity levels or training intensity goes down over a period of time. It's a result of the body's adaptation to the reduced demands you're placing on it. Imagine spending months building a sandcastle only to watch the tide slowly wash it away. That's retraining for you. But just as there are strategies to protect that sandcastle, there are methods to guard against rapid retraining. And one of those methods is called cross-training. This is one of the most effective ways to fend off detraining, but what exactly is it? Cross-training is the practice of mixing up different exercises and sports to engage various muscle groups and maintain overall fitness levels. Let's take the example of a swimmer who can't access a pool due to unforeseen circumstances. While swimming offers a full body workout and cardiovascular benefits, missing out on it does not mean all is lost. This swimmer could take up cycling. Not only does cycling work on different muscle groups and offer cardiovascular conditioning, but it also provides a novel experience, something new. Engaging in a new sport or activity can be invigorating for the mind. It can introduce a refreshing change from the usual routine, preventing mental fatigue and boredom. Another tactic to prevent detraining is sticking to a consistent but light training regimen. Even if you decide to take a break from your intense workout sessions, it doesn't mean you should stop moving altogether. By engaging in one or two light workouts every week, you're sending a message to your body. We're still in the game, just take it a bit easy. These sessions act as a maintenance mode for your body, helping retain the strength and endurance you've worked hard for. It's similar to watering a plant regularly. Even if it's not growing rapidly, consistent care ensures it doesn't wither away. Beyond cross-training, just varying your routine can help. If you're a regular weightlifter, maybe incorporate yoga or pilates during breaks. Such practices not only offer strength training, but also improve flexibility and mindfulness. Detraining isn't just countered at the gym or during formal workout sessions. Choosing to be active in daily life, be it taking the stairs over the elevator or walking over driving for short distances can make a lot of difference. These small steps keeps the body in a state of regular physical engagement, reducing the impacts of formal training breaks. In essence, while detraining is a natural physiological process, its effects can be minimized. The key is to be adaptive, open to varying routines, and ensure that movement remains a constant part of life. It's about making sure the body understands that while there might be breaks in intensity, the journey of physical wellness and fitness is ongoing. When we talk about the principle of reversibility, it's vital to recognize that this isn't a one-size-fits-all scenario. Different individuals based on their fitness experience, age, and biological factors experience reversibility at varying rates. Here's a deeper dive into how this principle plays out across diverse groups. First, let us look at beginners versus seasoned athletes. Imagine two people. One just started their fitness journey and the other has been training consistently for years. If both were to take a break from their routines, the newcomer would likely see their hard-earned gains diminish at a quicker rate compared to the veteran athlete. Why is that? The seasoned athlete has laid down a robust foundation over time. This foundation, built from consistent training, muscle memory, and physiological adaptations, doesn't erode overnight. They've essentially banged more fitness capital, so even if they spend a bit during a break, a substantial reserve remains. For them, consistency, especially in the early stages, is paramount. Missing out on regular workouts means they might be spending their limited gains faster than they can accumulate them. And then we have the dynamics of aging. Age introduces another layer of complexity. As we grow older, our bodies undergo various physiological changes. Muscle mass begins to decline, a process known as sarcopenia, 
hormonal shifts, particularly a decrease in testosterone and growth hormone levels, can slow down muscle growth as well as repair. As a result, older athletes might find themselves on a fast track of reversibility if they pause their training regimen. But it's not all bad news. Resistance training emerges as a beacon of hope here. Even light resistance exercises can act against rapid muscle loss. It's similar to a savings account earning interest. Small regular deposits can lead to significant long-term gains. For older athletes, these deposits are regular resistance workouts that help counteract the natural decline in muscle mass. Let's talk about having a personalized approach to fitness. The overarching lesson here is the need for personalization. Every individual is unique and so is their response to breaks in training. Recognizing where one stands on the reversibility spectrum can guide decisions on training frequency, intensity, as well as recovery. For beginners, the mantra should be consistency. They need to ensure that they're engaged regularly to lay down a strong foundation. Older adults, on the other hand, should prioritize resistance training to counteract the natural challenges age presents. Let's now look at some of the signs of reversibility in action. In our journey of fitness and wellness, staying in tune with our bodies is pivotal. Detraining isn't just a theoretical concept. It manifests in tangible, noticeable ways. Let's delve into understanding these signs more deeply so that we can better recognize and address them properly. Remember that time when you could run a mile without panting or complete a high intensity workout without feeling like you're gasping for breath? If those feats now seem increasingly challenging, even if you've only taken a short break or reduced your workout intensity, you might be facing the early symptoms of detraining. Stamina is a product of consistent cardiovascular training and it can decline when there is a break in that consistency. A workout that once felt like a walk in the park might now leave you feeling exhausted. This increased fatigue after familiar routines can be both physically and mentally disheartening. It's your body's way of signaling that it's not as conditioned as it used to be to handle the stress of that particular exercise. If lifting a certain weight, which was once a breeze, now feels like a monumental challenge, it's a clear sign of detraining in action. Muscles, when not consistently challenged, lose some of their force-generating capabilities. You might find yourself needing to reduce the weight or struggling to complete the same number of repetitions. Beyond just strength and stamina, detraining can have aesthetic implications too. Those defined muscles might start to look a tad softer or less pronounced. It's because in the absence of regular resistance training, the body begins to lose some of its lean muscle mass, leading to changes in overall muscle tone and definition. However, recognizing these signs isn't a cause for panic, it's a wake-up call. By being observant and identifying these early indicators, one can recalibrate their fitness regimen. Perhaps it's about reintroducing a particular exercise that was dropped or adjust the intensity and frequency of workouts. The beauty of the human body is its adaptability. With consistent effort and a well-tailored approach, one can reclaim lost ground and even make further gains. Remember, it's not about being disheartened by the setbacks, but being empowered by the knowledge to make informed decisions for our well-being. As one progresses and feels more comfortable, they enter the intensification stage. As the name suggests, this stage is about incrementally ramping things up. As the name suggests, this stage is about incrementally ramping things up. It's time to introduce more challenging exercises, but it's essential to do so gradually to ensure the body isn't overwhelmed. Diversity is also introduced during this stage, incorporating various exercises to keep the regimen stimulating, challenge different muscle groups, and ensure holistic development. The journey culminates in the peak performance stage. This is where individuals push their boundaries, strive to attain or even surpass their previous performance levels. Workouts are optimized to maximize strength gains. Even as one aims for their peak, continuous assessment of progress is vital. Regular check-ins ensure that all areas are addressed and fine-tuned for optimal performance. Now, as exciting as it is to get back into training after a break, it's also important to balance recovery and progress. In all this excitement, there's a risk of pushing oneself too hard too soon. Such an approach can lead to injuries or quick burnouts. It's essential to listen to one's body. This means incorporating ample rest days, especially in the early stages of reconditioning. Over time, as the body readjusts, the frequency and intensity of workouts can be increased. It's also beneficial to intersperse high-intensity sessions with low-impact exercises like swimming or yoga, 
ensuring a balanced approach that prioritizes both recovery and progress. Now, when it comes to programming the reconditioning plan, there's no one-size-fits-all program. Factors like the length of the break, the reason for it, such as whether it was due to an injury or other reasons, and individual fitness goals play a significant role. For someone returning after a short hiatus, a modified version of their previous routine might be enough. However, for those coming back after prolonged breaks or significant injuries, starting with foundational programs like bodyweight exercises, resistance band workouts, or even Pilates can be beneficial. Over time, as strength and endurance are rebuilt, more specialized training like lifting weights or sports-specific drills can be incorporated. Remember, returning to training isn't just a physical challenge, it's a mental one too. The gap between where one currently stands and where they once was can be daunting. Feelings of frustration, impatience, or even self-doubt are common. It's crucial to acknowledge these feelings and if needed, seek support, be it through trainers, peers, or even sports psychologists. Setting smaller, interim goals can be a massive boost to morale. Celebrating these smaller victories can fuel motivation and make the journey feel more achievable. Let's now talk about making progress. Regularly tracking one's progress is integral during reconditioning. This could be through traditional methods like logging exercise routines, tracking weights lifted, or noting down run times. Incorporating modern tools like fitness trackers or apps can offer insights into heart rate patterns, sleep quality, or even recovery rates. Moreover, periodic fitness assessments, be it every month or quarter, can provide a clearer picture of how far one has come and the areas that one needs more attention. In conclusion, Reconditioning is a journey of both the body and the mind. Recognizing the stages, being patient with oneself, following adaptable programs, addressing psychological challenges, and consistently measuring progress are all the cornerstones of regaining lost ground and reaching new athletic height. Throughout this video on the principle of reversibility in strength and conditioning, we've taken a deep dive into how the human body adapts and sometimes regresses based on training, frequency, intensity, and consistency. At the core, we discussed the intrinsic nature of our body's adaptability. Just as muscles strengthen when we consistently train, they can also weaken or lose their conditioning during extended breaks or reduced training. The principle of reversibility is a reminder that our hard-earned fitness gains are not permanent. Factors like the duration of the break or initial fitness levels and individual attributes can influence how quickly we experience detraining. Understanding reversibility also means recognizing its tangible effects on our training. We learned about planning routines with this principle in mind, ensuring minimized detraining during breaks. Additionally, it's imperative to acknowledge how different populations, from beginners to elite athletes or younger individuals to older adults, might experience the impacts of this principle very differently. In particular, injured athletes face unique challenges, making it crucial to develop strategies tailored to their needs. Reversibility might sound daunting and scary, but it's not a dead end. The process of reconditioning offers a structured pathway back to peak performance. By understanding the progressive stages of reconditioning, employing strategies that balance recovery and growth, and addressing the psychological hurdles, individuals can navigate their way back effectively. Implementing practical reconditioning programs and monitoring progress are essential steps in regaining lost ground. In conclusion, the principle of reversibility serves as both a cautionary tale and a beacon of hope. While it warns athletes and fitness lovers of the potential losses from inactivity or inconsistency, it also shines a light on the path back, emphasizing adaptability and resilience. As we wrap up this video, remember that understanding our body's responses, both in growth and regression, empowers us to make informed choices, ensuring a more holistic and sustained fitness journey.